Hi, so I'm Hanin Youssef, a Palestinian refugee in Lebanon, and I'm originally from the north of Palestine, Safad, and I'm currently living in Lebanon, as I mentioned. So regarding what's happening now in Sheikh Jarrah, I think it's uh, the start of uh, the right of uh, right to return to Palestine. The social media had shed light on the case. People from all over the world are seeing what's happening in Palestine. So now the issue and the case is more clear for people and uh, they know more about the issue. So uh, this, I think, is the start point to get back to Palestine and uh, to work on uh, this right and this uh, hope. I think it's uh, really different before than after what's happening in Chajara. People are more motivated, are more educated about the issue, especially here in uh, Palestinian camps in Lebanon. Uh, the young generation are knowing more about the case. The younger ones are uh, getting educated about the issue. And uh, people that know nothing about uh, the issue go, went and searched for it. So now they are more uh, motivated and have the energy to defend their right to, to return. One of the greatest challenges is uh, the issue of working and uh, living in Lebanon. We cannot have a property, we cannot own a land or a house, we cannot work in uh, more than 70 jobs in Lebanon. Uh, we get educated, we get our uh, certificates and degrees from university and we end up unemployed. We can't uh, work uh, in any business or any NGO or uh, anything that's open for others or Lebanese or any nationality in Lebanon. Uh, I think people should go and read more about the Palestinian case and know the history of Palestine and they will know by themselves that Palestine existed hundreds and millions of years before Israel and Israel has no right to exist as they mentioned. And uh, they should know that Palestinian refugees uh, have uh, critical cases and uh, have challenges and problems all over the world, especially those who live in, uh, in uh, Lebanon. They have no rights and uh, no even basic rights uh, to have. I'm Ruba Abdel Jawad. I'm a civil and environmental engineer. I'm from Lidda, but actually I'm residing in Lebanon. I'm born and raised here. And um, what I want to share with you is my thoughts about what's happening today in Palestine and specifically in Sheikh Jarrah. And um, I feel like that what's happening today is like, is like a trigger uh, and a motivation to the right to return to our homeland because Palestinians all over the world from different countries, whether the Middle East, or uh, European or American countries are standing for their country because they are showing support even on social media. And though that so many misinformation has flourished on social media, but still the truth would be clear. Well, actually, we, my family, I, and all the Palestinian families here in Lebanon have lived this for many times, many wars on Gaza Strip and on other regions in Palestine have occurred before. So we have lived this, but we still have hope and we uh, always aim and we always think that Palestine will be free one day. What I want to say is that we Palestinians here in Lebanon are all on the same boat. But what you have to know is that Palestinians here, whether 1948 or 1967, are facing so much challenges here in Lebanon. And somehow there are some differences among us. Well, I'm one of the 1967 refugees here. And what I face is somehow different than the 1948 ones. Let me start by the right to work, for example. 1948 refugees here in Lebanon uh, are allowed to work, but they are restricted to a number of occupations. It was around 72 in the past, and now it's around uh, 37 now. I mean, 37 professions, they are uh, prohibited from working. However, the 1967 ones are not allowed to work legally unless they issue a work residence permit. And of course, this has so many conditions. Second, the 1967 Palestinians here do not have identity cards. They are forced to issue residence permits. And these res residence permits 
must be renewed every year or every three months or every six months. It depends on the residence permits you have issued. However, the 1948 ones have permanent uh, cards, residence cards, but they are also facing so many challenges like the need to get a visa in order to travel to any country. And the third is that we both, 1967 or 1948, faced challenges uh, on the medical treatments here in Lebanon. Uh, we do not have the right to uh, have access to medical treatments unless if we are under the UNRWA's mandate. And UNRWA doesn't always uh, cover the medical expenses. So uh, we are, uh, let me say we are obliged to uh, seek uh, medical treatments on our own expense and which is mostly uh, too much costly for us and we cannot afford it well i aim from all the audience and whoever is listening to my message and to my colleagues message is to keep fighting for palestine to keep seeking for the truth because palestine is not just a normal case it's a big case it's a 73 year old issue and a conflict that must be resolved hello my name is hiba uh, hiba Lashar, and i'm from haifa i'm a palestinian refugee that lives uh, in lebanon right now um it's a nice country but unfortunately it does not treat palestinian refugees as nice as it is uh, there are a lot of things that we're missing that are basic human rights. For example, we are not allowed to work in like 72 um, careers. Um, we're not free to own a house. For example, there are only specific places that we can live in or we can rent outside of these specific places, which are the refugee camps. Um, recently, a lot of the youth of Palestinian youth have been having this um, internal conflict about whether they should keep on talking about the case or whether the Palestinian case or whether they need to uh, go after their own living and to support themselves. But what happened, what's happening lately in Palestine have demolished uh, this idea that there might be a chance that Palestinian youth might forget Palestine. It just disappeared and vanished because it, it was like a wake up call for everyone uh, in a way that what's happening. No, this is the truth. This is reality. There is an occupation, an Israeli occupation, and we are Palestinians that have the right to live in that country, to be with our people. Uh, it, even though it was far away from us, it connected us to our people again, to our history again, and made us think in different ways and in different point of views and to give whatever we are doing to this cause, to this uh, country, to these people, to understand how to use the social media that's trying to quiet our voices down to, to spread this cause to spread the awareness about this cause what's happening in this country uh the way that people are waking up more to the truth is very important and it's very uh noticeable and can be seen throughout the several uh social media platforms so yeah Almost every Palestinian right now is talking about the Palestinian cause in one way or another, whether it's about boycotting uh, the Israeli um, uh, products or any company that supports Israel, or whether about uh, or whether in school or whatever, everyone's talking about it the way they talk about it the way they know how to talk about it it's not supposed to be it shouldn't be a political talk it's just the idea that when I, when I, when you're sitting with your friends and someone talks about it and everyone's expressing the way they feel it's just enough to show that these people are talking about this these people did not forget about this cause so yeah um being a palestinian refugee in lebanon is like uh it's like you're in a race you know um you're always trying to run after uh, your own life at the same time you have an identity you need to protect 
um, it's it feels like a mission that just because you prevented me from having uh, rights, basically human rights, that does not mean you can affect my identity. I'm still a Palestinian refugee on the Lebanese lands, and I'm gonna chase after what I want, whether you stop me, no matter how much you stop me. And so, yeah, I think the best way to compare, to describe it is being in a race. You're always chasing after another, whether it's uh, being uh, the Lebanese community being racist towards you, of course, not all of the Lebanese community, but a part of it being racist towards you, uh, having stereotypes against you, um, like looking at you, oh, well, you're you're Palestinian refugee, you you don't you look decent. So I was like, am I supposed to look like a trash or something? So yeah, this is some you deal with it not only. It's not just because whenever you open the Palestinian case, it's shown. No, it's shown everywhere, even at workplaces. Wherever you go, there's got to be a trigger that shows that someone might be with you or someone might be against you. Um, my students are from different backgrounds. I'm, I'll be talking about the Palestinian refugee students. They are always in, in a conflict, if you want to say, about how they want to do what they are doing exactly how their identity is gonna develop um they're always confused they they face a lot of like uh social gap between them and their lebanese friends like oh my friends can do this and that i can do this and that uh and they grow up to know why and they feel kind of you know, upset about it, that they can't have a normal dreams or normal life. Um, uh, at the same time, the curriculum that they put and they place does not talk about, about Palestine enough. It talks about everything except Palestine. So that's something that uh, I always try to do in my classes is that I give examples about Palestine. I talk about Palestine. My projects are about Palestine. It needs to be talked about more and more. You know, right now, this generation is growing up to the idea that you need to study, work, and get out of Lebanon. Okay, where's Palestine between these three? You know, you need to, you need to insert it in whatever way you can. They need to understand that this is not what they're meant to have. They're, it's not just having a nationality. It will make your life better. No, you need to understand what, why are you here? Why are you in Lebanon? Why are you, why are you chasing after a nationality, Aslan, in the first place? Why are you going after a better life? They need to understand this, not just with the idea that I need to get out. Why you need to get that? Why are you Aslan running away? I have one message that I need, like everyone should search more. Do not believe the media, what they show you. The media does not show everything. You need to search your way about what's happening in Palestine and you need to see the truth as it is. It's not, uh, it's not like a country and two people are fighting over religious uh, reasons. No, it's just there's an occupation that's trying to steal the land of the original people and they are trying to resist this occupation. This is the truth. Search for the truth and see it as it is and do not try to like glorify it or something. See it as it is. Uh, I'm Samir Muhammad. I'm a Palestinian refugee from Lebanon. Uh, what I want to say about Palestine that what happened lately and um, Sheikh Jarrah was a waking up call for Palestinians across all the world in Lebanon and Syria and uh, 48 lands in Gaza and in the West Bank and of course in Quds to work for the Palestinian cause and it was a good for publicity of the cause because the world did not know about the truth of Palestine that's what that's and the social media plays an important role in sharing the truth and sharing what's what's really happening in Palestine and Sheikh Jarrah and Al Aqsa and the Gaza war was also a good for us because we were in control Hamas was in control of the situation and we proved that the armed resistance is the only solution for us for the Palestinians to exist 
for us to live, for us to return our land and to go back to our land. Uh, to be honest, I don't want to talk to any political figure or any president across the world because we know them uh, for 73 years. We know that they are not qualified to talk. The only way to talk and the only way to exist and live is through our weapon. And Hamas proves that the only solution for us is armed resistance. And when we have the power, then Israel accept our condition for ceasefire. That's why I don't, I don't care about Biden. I know he's supporting Israel very, very well and very strongly. And he's, he's giving so many, so much money for them. But I know that we have the power, we have the motivation to fight them, even though we have no resources and we have no financial support. So I ask all the Palestinians to not to try to talk to any president or any political figure. We only have our weapon and that's it. It was great for us to see that our people are, are working together and acting together to serve for our cause. But personally, I felt like um, a little bit useless because I don't have the power except for social media and it's a super powerful one but like I want to be in the land I want to fight physically the, the uh, Israeli uh, people but unfortunately I couldn't do so but uh, it was great to see that our people are working together for the same uh, cause to be honest, it's kind of miserable because we have no civil rights, we have no political rights, we, we barely are surviving, we're not living to be honest. But that's, that's not making us like, okay, khalas, we don't want to work for Palestine. It's giving us more motivation to work for our land because we believe that we deserve to live. And the life we are living, it's not for us, like we are, we are Palestinians. We have a wonderful land, which is Palestine, and we deserve to live. But we are surviving, we are doing our best to come out of this situation.